before I begin, I'd like to invite you all to reach into your pocket and take out your phone. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to turn it off or put it on silent. Instead, I'd like you to take a look at it in your hand. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I feel that you should know that there is blood on your mobile phone. You may not be able to see it, but by the end of this talk, I'd hope that you'll find it there. Now, I'd like a show of hands. How many of you have replaced your, phone, your watch with your phone? Well, you're not alone. Over 70% of people in the Western world have totally replaced watches with phones for telling the time, with the average person looking at their phone screen over 80 times a day. Speaking of time, let's check it. Everyone press the home button, and their screen reads 1512. However, in reality, that's not the time. The time is time for change. It's time for us to realize the global significance of what it means to have a phone. In the period since the ending of the Second World War in 1945, an estimated 51 million people have been killed in wars in China, Sudan, Vietnam, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo has been devastated for centuries by regional conflict fueled in part by a vicious and deadly scramble for its significant reserves of natural resources, like copper, gold, cobalt, and diamonds. We've all heard the saying, diamonds are a girl's best friend, but this couldn't be further from the truth for the women in the Democratic Republic of Congo who face the real consequences that these diamonds and other precious minerals bring. The fight to control these resources is characterized by the widespread rape of hundreds of thousands of women, systematically raped as a weapon of war. It dehumanizes and destabilizes entire communities. Women and girls of villages are raped in front of their husbands, children, friends, and neighbors, rendering that entire community totally distraught. However, this community is now ripe for reoccupation by these vicious oppressors to open a mine and gain access to these mineral resources. But why does a 16-year-old girl like me get to be on a stage talking to you while in Congo another 16-year-old girl is in her village, traumatized, terrified, and broken? Part of the reason is this, something which she'll never even get to hold. This electronic device, which we all depend upon so much, contains several ores, copper, gold, silver, tantalum, platinum, and palladium. In eastern Congo today, the mining of these mineral resources helps finance a large num number of local armed groups and contributes directly to fueling the ongoing conflict. Wealth generated from the minerals trade runs into hundreds of millions of dollars each year through four key minerals, the ores that produce tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold. These mineral resources are used by the car, aerospace, jewelry, and most importantly, the electronics and technological industry. Anti-conflict mineral activists argue that due to lack of transparency around the supply of minerals, it means that we as consumers have no way of ensuring that our products are conflict-free. Which brings me back to time. It's time to change. We need to raise awareness regarding the issue of how these minerals for our products are sourced on a global stage. Why do we not hear about it more? Because we think that it's nothing to do with us or that it's not our fault. It's these military groups carrying out these vicious acts that are a world away from ours. But why do these military groups do what they do? Simple, supply and demand. We provide the demand by aspiring to own these products. Our desire for the latest smartphone drives the demand. As people queue for the latest iPhone release at the Apple Store, does the supply part of the sum ever come into consideration? In places like the Democratic Republic of Congo, the desperation of immense poverty drives certain groups to fight to secure the mining rights for these precious ores and to escape poverty. If it came down to it, who amongst us could say that we wouldn't do the same? But surely there must be something we can do. We consider ourselves to be good global citizens, we turn off the lights when we leave the room, use paper straws, we recycle. But active global stewardship is so much more than that. In our role as a global citizen, it is incumbent upon us to help stem the tide of violence by spreading awareness about human issues, prevalent issues like the conflict minerals. Conflict minerals are quite literally the building blocks that make up our modern world. 63% of the entire world population have a smartphone. That's 4.68 billion people. And each smartphone has approximately $1.82 of gold inside. The first step to solving the issue is to recognize the ubiquity of conflict minerals in our day-to-day -day lives. The second step is raising awareness about the humanitarian and environment crisis in places like Congo. Although it may seem a world away, the nature of these issues is far closer to home than we think. 
Congo is part of the second largest rainforest in the world. Rainforest that is at risk of deforestation due to the consistent mining of the resources beneath it. If you're concerned about climate change, then you ought to be concerned about Congo. Half of those who've been killed as a result of the conflict are children under the age of five. If you're a child advocate and are concerned for the well-being of children around the globe, then you ought to be concerned about Congo. If you're concerned about women and making the fifth sustainable development goal of gender equality a reality, then you ought to be concerned about Congo. If you drive a car, take a flight, like to wear jewellery, own a laptop or a phone, you ought to be concerned about Congo. As beneficiaries of the golden age of technology and advancement, it's our responsibility to speak out about hidden issues like these that are added to by this advancement. Speaking of hidden, I'd like you all to once again consider your phone. Can you see the blood on your phone? Now, the answer to this issue is not to ban electronic products or devices containing these minerals, but instead for us all to become advocates for the people of Congo and the many countries in similar positions by campaigning and encouraging our governments and large corporations to create transparency of supply, a fair trade for phones, so to speak. Effective control of the trade is not as complex as some countries would argue. There are only six key stages from mine to mobile, and each is open to effective regulation if seriously addressed. There's the mine itself, the trading houses where the ore is sold, the exporting companies, the transit countries, the refining companies, and the electronic companies themselves. Tracing, auditing, and certifying these mineral inputs is both feasible and effective. By consumers like us being made aware, we can make a difference to this urgent and important issue. Now, one of my personal life mottos is, there are no problems, only solutions. And while this may not work out for me in maths class, often when it comes to global issues, it's the case that if we're not a part of the solution, we're likely adding to the problem. So today, let's put ourselves on the solution side of this equation. Just by starting a dialogue, asking questions about where our products come from, and putting pressure on companies for transparency of supply, we are becoming a part of the solution. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but there still is blood on your phone. It might take a long time to wipe off, but by working together, we can change the course of history for people in places like the Congo. Together, we can put an end to corruption, violence, degradation of women, and child labor, and begin a new era where our phones are wiped clean. Now, once again, I'd like you to press the home button of your phone. Check the time. However, now I'd hope that you'd see the real time. Time for tea, transparency, I, inclusivity, M, morality, and E, ethics in this industry.